Our best present this Christmas might come from NASA, a telescope like the world has never seen, designed to look deeper into the universe than ever. It's as big as a tennis court, as heavy as a school bus. Remember the Hubble? Well, this one, the James Webb Space Telescope, is said to be a hundred times more powerful, and it will orbit the sun. But the Hubble has taught us a lot in its 30 years of orbiting the Earth. Three, two, one, and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. earliest history of the universe. Almost a century later, the space telescope that bears Hubble's name gives us our most up-to-date estimate of the number of observable galaxies in the universe. Ultimately, as is the case with all voyages of discovery, its greatest contribution will be the unexpected breakthrough that brings completely new knowledge. Very cool. Joining us now are two scientists who had big roles in developing the new telescope. Dr. John Mather is senior project scientist on the project. He won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2006. And Dr. Begonia Vila is a systems engineer at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. She is in French Guiana for the launch. Thank you both for making time for us. Welcome to you both. Glad to have you on the program. Dr. Mather, let me start with you and try to get at what we've learned from the Hubble and how we hope to advance it with the James Webb. As we mentioned, the Hubble was instrumental in our, in our understanding of and discovery of dark matter in 2006. Talk about what dark matter is and how the how the James Webb might add to that research. Sure, and dark matter is a substance that astronomers can uh, detect the presence of, but we can never see. As far as we can tell, it's completely transparent, but it has gravity and it's very important to us because from our story of the expanded universe, we believe it's the reason we are here. In other words, uh, dark matter started moving soon after the beginning of the expansion of the universe and it formed the objects that were going to lead to galaxies. So we are here in person today because dark matter started the process of forming galaxies a long time ago. So we will be looking at that and looking for the effects of that dark matter. Dr. Vila, what about the James Webb Telescope itself? The Hubble needed some servicing around 1994 and it made a big impact in terms of the quality of the images that it sent back. What's the plan in terms of, you can see the difference, the before and then after the first repair mission. What's the preparation been like for preparing for potential repairs for the James Webb? Well, um, Hubble uh, is orbiting the Earth, so as you said, uh, it was possible to do repairs. Uh, James Webb is going to be one million miles away, four times the distance of the moon. So we cannot repair it. So a lot of the effort on James Webb has been uh, a very thorough test campaign on the ground to make sure that it is going to work as it should. And one advantage it has over Hubble is that the big mirror of James Webb, which is made of 18 smaller mirrors that we can fold to fit in the rocket, has actuators on the back. So uh, we will not have the same problem that Hubble had. And if, it, if we did, we know how to correct it. Uh, real time uh, sending commands from the ground. Dr. Mather, another area in which the Hubble telescope mm -hmm. advanced our understanding was the age of the universe. How does the James Webb factor into that? Is it kind of connected to what you were 
talking about with dark matter and understanding the forces that began to move after the beginnings of the formation of the universe, or is there more to it than that? Oh, there is more to it than that. Uh, the Hubble was used to detect the fact that the universe is accelerating, expanding faster and faster every day. And we expect to measure that uh, effect on, but much better with the Webb telescope because we can see farther back in time and we can see the infrared light that helps us see those uh, special marker stars that are called supernovae that we use to measure distances. So we expect to get a better measurement of this, but it's gotten very interesting in the recent years because now we have more than one way to measure the expansion rate and we're not getting the same answer every time. So something's out there, something very mysterious. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.